chair or you're on the floor, get comfortable for your own hips. Sit up on blankets if you want to. Same thing in your chair if you want to sit on a blanket, do. Especially the chairs are kind of cold. <laughs> so, <laughs> so let yourself lengthen up. Find a comfortable place for your hands to rest so that you feel really easy and through all the way up into your shoulders and open across your chest. And then just take a couple of nice breaths. Watch the breath coming in and going out through your nose. Really appreciating the breath as it comes in and goes out. And imagine that you're breathing equally in and out through both sides of your nose. Bring your breath into your belly, feeling the belly expand a little bit as you inhale. And if you're comfortable to come into those three part breaths. Inhaling into the belly, into your ribs, all the way up into your chest. And let's let our hands come on out beside us here. And as we inhale, float the arms out and up overhead. And on your exhale, let your hands come right down together in front of your chest. And then we'll reverse and inhale the hands right up through the midline. And on the exhale, open the arms on back out and down. And now let's rise our, I'm going to mirror you, right arm up and out to the side here. And then just fold the arm across your chest. And you can hold like kind of over the top of your shoulder. That's kind of up to you. Just be mindful, and then just tilt your head away from your hand. So you let your right ear come towards your right shoulder. Now really let the arm relax and really feel the weight of the hand there so that you can maybe release a little deeper there in the top of your shoulder, maybe through the side of your neck as well. One more breath. And then we'll start to come on back up. We're going to bring that arm on down and rise the left arm up. And then again, as you bring the arm across the chest and you kind of hook your hand over, just find a way that feels really easy for you there. And then tilt your left ear towards your left shoulder, letting yourself come into that side of the neck stretch on this side. And again, feel the weight from your hand. Let your arm just hang. Let yourself just release. And we'll slowly bring our head on back up and release our arms out beside us, taking a nice inhale. And on the exhale, let's twist to our right. Bring yourself on around into that twist. Feel the feet in the floor, whatever part of your feet are touching. So when you press into your feet, you feel how your belly engages a little bit in your low back. One more inhale. And on the exhale, come on back around through center all the way into the other direction. And again, just feeling those feet in the floor. Feel the chin parallel to the floor. One more breath. And then as you exhale, use your belly to bring you on back around into center again. And let's inhale the arms straight on out from the shoulders for a second. Go ahead and flex your hands. And then bring your hands forward. Let yourself release here. And then send your fingertips down towards the floor. And then flex your hands again and really spread your fingers out when you do that. And then again, bringing the fingertips down towards the ground. And then flexing and letting the hands be really spread out. And then one more time, inhaling, letting the fingertips face down. And then again, really flexing, feeling those fingers spread wide. 
And then open your arms on out beside you here now. Press out into the heels of your hands. You're really going to feel the underside of your arms. And then we'll release and come on down. Let's make one little circle with our shoulders. So bring the shoulders forward and up a little bit, back a little bit, and then down. And then reverse. Let the shoulders go back a little first, and then up and over the top, and then let them come forward and down. And then just shake your hands out a little bit. You all who are on the floor, switch the cross of your legs if you can to bring your other leg in front so that you change the cross of your legs. And then from here, let's come forward and back a little bit with our breath. So letting yourself start to ease your way forward when you exhale. And let your inhales bring you back up to the top. It does not matter whether you go an inch or 12 inches, right? So just gently moving with your breath. Then the next time that you end up forward, let yourself stay there and you can support however you want. You can put your hands on the floor if you're on the floor. You can have your hands on your legs. If you're in your chair and it feels better to separate your feet further and put your elbows above your knees. Or maybe bring your hands down more even. That's up to you. So just be mindful of finding a place that feels okay for your back. If you're a okay and comfortable to let your head hang do. You might even want to move your head around a little bit. You might want to turn it. You might want to nod yes a little bit. Good. One more breath here. And then let's take our time when we start to head back up. Be mindful as you rise on back up. And get your feet comfortable, whether you're on the floor cross-legged or maybe you feel like stretching your legs out. Because we're going to bring our arms behind us. If you're on the floor, you can just lightly touch the ground with your fingertips or go onto your palms if you want. If you're in your chair, you can just lean back because that back of the chair really hits most of us pretty close to under our shoulder blades so that we can feel that lift right there at the base of the shoulder blades while we're supported and be easy for your neck you can look forward you can look up a little bit you can look up more if you want one more breath and then we'll come on back up to the top take a nice inhale here and as we exhale we'll twist to our right again so let yourself come around into that twist and you may even want to go a little more. You may even want to look a little more behind yourself than we did the first time. One more inhale. And on your exhale, use your belly to bring you back. Keep on going into the other direction now. Finding that twist in the middle of the back. So you've got to really lengthen up through the top of your head. Feeling your sitting bones drawing down. Finding that twist right in the middle of your back. One more inhale. And then on your exhale, come on back around to center. Stretch your legs out for a second. If you're in your chair, you don't have to go all the way straight legs. You might just want to go a little bit. You might feel good. Move through your feet and your ankles a little bit, whatever feels good, flexing or and pointing or circling. And then we're all going to make our way around towards our hands and knees. So you know if you do not want to be on your knees, certainly do not be on your knees. You can be up higher with your hands on the chair. You also might want to grab a blanket and have a blanket underneath your <coughs> knees or hands or both, right? So let's get that neutral spine established there. Let yourself come in to getting your hands under your shoulders and get your feet or your knees under your hips. Let your spine just become neutral. So you're reaching back a little through your tailbone. You're looking down between your hands. So one more nice inhale. And as you exhale, draw your tailbone up under you, rounding up into your back here now. Really feel the hands on the, whatever they're on, the floor or the chair. And then as you inhale now, send your tailbone back and up and feel how that tilts your pelvis, your belly melts down, your rib cage comes down. You can look forward if you want, or you can look down and just a little forward. And then just ease your way into your cat pose again. 
when you draw that navel towards the spine, it feels so good to drop the tailbone down. Inhale your way back into your cow. And start to move at your own pace, right? So it can be slower than this, it can be faster, you can stop and pat or cow if you want to and just, you know, really let yourself experience the pose without moving. Just take your time, let it feel really good, waking up your spine now. And then finish off the one that you're on or that you're moving into. And then come back to more neutral. Look down there between your hands. And, and then just turn your head to look to the right. And then look back down between your hands and turn your head to look to the left. And then turn to look back down. And let's bring our left foot forward and our right foot back and come into our first lunge. So remember how far apart your feet are, totally up to you. If your wrists are starting to bother you, compensate whatever, however you need in your hands. You can come to fists, you can hold the edge of your chair. You know, if you're on blocks, you can always put fists on blocks instead of going flat onto your hands. So just be mindful, let it feel really good to open up through the back of that right leg now. Engage your belly a little bit. Good, and we're gonna switch to the other leg. Remember, feet are a little bit like hips distance apart, like you're on those very narrow railroad tracks. You can feel that left heel reaching directly behind your foot, so you really come into the calf there in the back of the leg, behind your knee probably. Let your shoulders draw down away from your ears. Good, and let's switch legs again. Again, be mindful, take your time. If it feels good to let your left hand come up to be above your knee there on your thigh, you can. If not, don't do it. And we'll switch again to come to the other side. So bringing that left foot back again, getting that sense of like you're on narrow railroad tracks. If you like to bring your right hand up, you can. And then we'll come on down so we can step forward and bring our feet hips distance apart and parallel right underneath our hips here. And you know, be really mindful. You need to stack blocks up to put your hands or your forearms on them, do it. You can put them on the chair if you need to. You can have your blocks on the floor or you can let yourself hang. Remember another good way to support the back is just to rest your elbows above your knees. And then try to feel the weight of your head if possible. Let your head hang. Give the back time just to gradually stretch out a little bit there, your low back, and also the backs of your legs. So even if your knees are bent in this pose, you're still opening up the backs of your legs. It doesn't have to be something that feels, you know, close to pain. In fact, you certainly don't want it to feel like it's painful. Good. So one more nice, full, deep breath here. And then we'll bring our hands up to our hips, press into our feet equally, and rise on up to standing. And let's inhale our arms all the way out and up overhead. And on our exhale, let our hands come down together in front of our hearts. So let yourself shift a little side to side. Go ahead and look at your feet. You might even want to walk in place a little bit so that you can let yourself Really feel those feet coming into being aligned as close to parallel as you can. And then once you get ready to bring your gaze forward and your hands to be in front of your heart there, just feel connected there through your hands, through each finger and your thumbs, lightly. It's not like you're pushing hard at all. Elbows are softening down towards the ground. And then just enjoy accepting your breaths in and out through your nose. It's 
And if you can imagine that the air around you is supporting you all around, like everywhere that your skin is touching the air, you're supported. So it feels very easy. And as we unfold our arms right on down beside us, we'll inhale the arms all the way out and up overhead. And as you exhale, lower your left arm down, leave your right arm up there, and let's come over into a little side stretch. So come on into breathing into the right ribs. It does not have to mean you go far, right? It might be just a little bit over, but the breath coming into the ribs will really expand the spaces between your ribs there. We'll come up, back up, bend that elbow for a second. Let yourself just feel your tricep, just for a second. And then stretch the arm back long. And all we're going to do is lower that arm down and rise the left arm up at the same time. And then again, we're going to lift up through that side of the body. So think about reaching up before you go over to the side. And then just breathe into the ribs there. Feeling the expansion there through the ribs. Good, and then we'll rise up. We're gonna bend the elbow. Again, you have to adjust however you need, wherever your hand will go. However, you can do it for your own shoulder. Good, and then we'll rise that arm on up and we're gonna lower it right on down beside us. And now let's inhale the arms forward and up overhead and make a big circle. Let them go behind you if you can. Just be mindful. And once they get down, bend your knees a little bit. Press your feet into the floor. And then reach back behind you first and make that big circle coming the other way. Really pressing into the feet, bringing the arms on forward and down. And now let's inhale the arms forward and up overhead. And as we exhale, arms like wings as you bend your knees and come forward into your standing forward bend. Let your next inhale help you find that flat, long back. Whether you put your hands on the chair or your legs or your blocks, it doesn't matter. And we're going to step our right foot back and come into lunge. Draw those shoulders down. Let yourself feel the feet in the floor here. Good. <clears throat> and we'll come on into down dog from here. So take your time. As you reach back into down dog, be mindful. Feel equal through the sides of your body. Wherever your hands like to go. Whatever height feels best for your shoulders. The blocks, the chair, the floor. If you want to walk a little bit, go ahead and bend one knee at a time in your dog. Good. And let your next inhale bring you out towards that plank. And again, you all know you don't have to do a full plank. You can do a half plank and you put your knees down if you're on the floor, or you can come to your forearms and get out of your hands. And you can stay, you can bend the elbows if you like to, you know, just letting the elbows come towards the ribs really gets you into your biceps and your shoulders. And then we'll come on back into downward facing dog pose. Good from here, let's bring our right foot forward to find lunge. So whatever helps to get you there, however you need to get into that lunge. And then we'll come on back into standing forward bend, feet and hips distance apart and parallel. So having completed our first sun salutation, just go right to your breath. Let yourself feel the ribs expanding. So have that sense of expanding your ribs both side to side, but also front to back, right? Good. Take one more breath. And we're going to let our knees soften, bring our hands to our hips, and come on up to standing, and inhale our arms all the way out and up overhead. And on our exhale, as our hands come down, think about getting taller, letting the top of the head reach up more towards the ceiling. Now find that alignment of your pelvis in your mountain pose. Make sure your tailbone's reaching down. You don't want to tuck it down up under you and let yourself find that sense of the upper back responding to that. So let your tailbone reach back towards between your heels or a little behind your heels even. Good. And then let's inhale the hands right up through the midline. And on the exhale, open the arms like wings as you come on into your standing forward bend. And let your next inhale help you find that flat back wherever you want your hands to be. And we're going to step our left foot back and come into lunge. And inhale. 
Exhale into your downward facing dog pose. So again, whether your hands are on a chair or the block or the floor, just be mindful about finding that length in your spine, in your down dog. Good. We're going to come on out towards a plank. And again, you know, this is up to you. This plank pose, it is up to you whether you like to get out of your hands, go down to your forearms, put your knees down, do a half plank if you're on the floor. If you like to do push-ups, you can. Totally up to you, but just be mindful. Find that core strength. And we'll come on back into down dog. Good. And then from here, we'll bring our left foot forward to come into lunge. And then we'll come on back into standing forward bend. And, you know, be comfortable with how you are supporting yourself. If you know, wow, I like to just hang and hold my own elbows, you can go for that. But if it bothers your back, don't do it. Easy breath. Feel your feet equal in the floor. If you can, for a second, let your toes float up so that you're, you know, can really tell whether you're rolling on either of your feet to the outside or the inside of your feet. And then let the toes just softly release back down to the floor. Watch your breath all the way in and all the way out. And then we'll let our hands come on up to our hips, press into our feet as we rise up to standing, and inhale our arms all the way out and up. And on our exhale, let our hands come down together in front of our heart. Let's inhale our hands up through the midline. Come into a wide open V with your arms. So your hands are apart. You're going to turn your palms towards each other. Even let your pinkies turn in a little more so you've got lots of space between your shoulders and your ears. Really lengthen up through your fingertips. You can even lift your gaze up if that feels good. Just make sure you're not tucking your tailbone up under you. One more breath. And then as you exhale, come forward, bend your knees. Take your time as you come into your standing forward bend. And on your next inhale, find that nice, long, flat back. And we're going to walk into down dog from here. So you decide if you want your hands on the floor or the blocks or the chair. And then you just walk your way back into your dog. Feel as equal as you can between the sides of your body right now. So feel your hands, the surface they're on, and that long line that comes like from the pinky fingers up the side of the wrist, all the way through into your shoulders, and then all the way back to your sitting bones. And then we'll come on out towards that plank again. It is optional to do a back bend here. You all know that. You can come into the plank and stay. You can move in and down to a sphinx or a cobra if you want, or come into an up dog, or no back bend at all. And then we'll come on back into downward facing dog pose. And find that length, reach back through your tailbone. Imagine what your spine looks like in this pose. And then we'll come on back again towards that plank. Again, you're more than welcome to do a back bend but it is certainly not necessary so if you want to come into any back bend at all you choose yours and then we'll come on back again into downward facing dog pose reaching your way back feel that sense of really finding the length of your spine and from here let's bring our left foot forward and come into lunge And then let's come on back into our standing forward bend, feet hips distance apart. And again, just be mindful. How does your back feel? You, know, you can may decide you want to try something different with your hands. If you never put them up on your back and you think it feels good to clasp them at your low back, you can try that. Or you know, you can hold your elbows again. Some people like to just put their hands on their calves behind. You know, so. And you know, if it's better for you to use your elbows to rest above your knees, just be mindful and enjoy. Easy breaths. Let your face go. And of course, the big thing, of course, is our jaw, holding tension in our jaws. See if you can, I don't know, imagine relaxing your teeth. That might help. Or your tongue.
And one more breath. And then we'll bring our hands to our hips. We're going to press into our feet and come on up to standing. And inhale our arms all the way out and up. And on our exhale, as our hands come down, the top of the head is going to float up higher. So feel that lightness. You feel a little bit lighter than you did when you started, probably. Especially your head feels kind of light. But then, when you think about that, your head is not compressing downward into your spine, it's easier to find all that space in your spine and to let your spine naturally align. Once you get your pelvis aligned, the rest of the spine really wants to line up, right? And then you can just stay here all day. We'll go ahead and unfold our arms on down beside us and move around however you need, walk as you need. I'm going to flip my chair around if you're using a chair. Do you have your blocks handy in case you want them here. And we're going to step our right foot back and come into warrior two. So coming into that right foot about parallel to the back edge of our mat. That left foot's parallel to the long edge. The bend of the knee is no farther forward than your ankle. And then just let your hands come to be right in front of your heart into your prayer hands. Feel very balanced between your feet all the way through your legs up into your hips. Good. And then unfold your arms on down. Now we're going to inhale the right back arm up and turn to look back over it. So let yourself turn. Make sure that hand is right back from your shoulder. And then start to turn your head back around and over towards the left so that you can then float your left arm up into line. Feel like you're reaching equally out through both sets of fingertips and feel your feet very equally into the ground. Strong warrior two. Let's turn that left palm up and inhale, reach up. You may even want to reach a little back behind yourself, really finding that sense again of breathing into your left ribs. And on your next exhale, come into your side angle. So that might mean you want to put your hand on your chair or your thigh, or you may want to go lower, put your forearm on your chair or your thigh. Adding the right arm is totally optional. You can keep your right hand down on your hip, or you can add that, that arm up into line with the right side of your body. Just be mindful of your shoulder. Let yourself enjoy finding length through both sides of your body. Good. Nice. Feel the feet in the floor equally. One more breath. And then we're going to come on back into Warrior Two, pressing those feet away from each other as we come, reaching out through your fingertips and softening the tops of your shoulders. Let's bring our hands down from here. We're going to turn our feet more parallel, adjusting for your wide-legged forward bend. And of course, if you want your blocks, getting your blocks as you come on forward. And take your time. Remember, you can adjust your stance once you get your hands down. You can bend a knee at a time, too, if that feels good. Just let it feel okay in your own knees. And you know if that bending doesn't work, don't do it. And then once you come back to center, remember your knees can be bent or straight in this pose. Feel the feet pressing away from each other like you're trying to make your mat longer with your feet. And that, that'll widen your sit bones out. It makes your inner thighs want to melt their way behind you. And then just stay here for a few breaths. And if you're like, I want to get out of my hands, you can always stack your blocks up if you'd rather and stay on your forearms to get out of your hands. Or you can fold forward. If it feels okay to you to go ahead and allow your head to hang, let the top of the head release towards the ground, by all means do. Just don't force anything. All right, really just let yourself be where you can, feeling the legs and the hips, but releasing now in the upper body. And follow your breath all the way in and all the way out. Nice, full, deep breath. 
Now you know, when you take your time to come up, you come up however you need. You can always get your feet closer together before you actually rise up if that's helpful for you, right? And then take your time, move around a little bit, walk around if you need to. If you feel stiff, like, man, oh man, it's pretty cold this morning. It's been pretty cold. So I don't know about you all, but I certainly have some stiffness going on. So sometimes just moving, you know, stretching a little bit in your feet, your ankles, your legs out. We're going to go the other side. It is supposed to be like 60 today though, right? Yes. So <laughs> we're back to spring again before we go back to winter. So bending into that front knee, and, and again, how far apart your feet are. Your feet can be, you know, 18 inches apart and you can be in a warrior two. Okay. Bringing your hands to your heart, feeling that sense of being very, you know, very even between your feet all the way up through your legs into your hips. And then as you unfold your arms and you look back over your left shoulder and rise that left arm up, you can see that it's right directly behind you, right back from your shoulder. Try not to let it be too low or too high, right? Kind of just where you can look over it comfortably. And then turn your head over to the right again and float that arm up as well. So you feel very equal through your arms, all the way out through both sets of fingertips, and feel the feet equal in the floor. Imagine you're trying to make your mat a little longer with your feet. Strong pose. We're going to turn our right palm up and inhale, reach up. Now again, you can go a little back or you can reach directly up. Bring the breath into the right side. And on your next exhale, come into your side angle where again, it can be your hand on your chair or on your leg. You can go down to your forearm if you want to go lower, keeping the length of the spine. Totally optional to add the left arm up. So the arm can be in line with the left side of the body or it can be straight up from your shoulder too. So if you want to use your arm, but it doesn't quite cooperate to go closer to your ear, you can bring it up. If you'd like to feel the arm up there instead of hand on your hips, that's up to you. Enjoy that length through both sides of the body. Feel your head as a part of your spine. We're gonna come on back into warrior two, press the feet away from each other. It gets you right back into that core strength of the pose. And we'll bring our hands on down. And again, we're going to turn our feet more parallel. So get yourself set. Again, if you like your blocks, grab your blocks and take your time. When you get your hands down to whatever surface, whatever height of surface you want to use. And this time, get even between your feet, whether your knees are bent or straight. And walk your hands a little to the right or maybe all the way over to your right foot. Totally up to you how far you go. Just enjoy, once you're there, just stay for a couple of breaths. Let the legs adjust the way they will. And then come back to center and we'll go to the left. Again, you don't have to go all the way to your foot. You can stay in front of it. You can be on your blocks or the floor. And then just stay there and breathe. and then come on back into center again. Take your time here. If you need to bend a knee at a time, do. Let your body kind of wiggle however it needs. Maybe you'd rather just bend your knees pretty deeply. Maybe you want to put your elbows above your knees to support your back a little bit. And then when you get ready to set up to be with your breath, you know, you can try anything you want, right? You can try putting blocks stacked up under your head. You know, with, if you're on your forehead on those blocks, that means your back is long, right? If you hang your head down, that's what's going to be what puts a little too much pressure into some people's low back. So just be really mindful and let yourself feel that heavy head. Imagine the weight of the head just allowing you to find more space in your spine, really. And watch your breaths all the way in, all the way out, letting them become fairly even. One more full deep breath. 
of course, when you get ready to rise up, only you know how you feel. So, you know, adjust how you need. And if you're dizzy when you get up, be very mindful. You can stay wider with your feet for a little bit. Of course, you can hold on to your chair if you need to and move through your feet and your ankles. It feels good to do that. And we're going to come this time into Warrior One. So, I'm going to leave my chair turned this way. You can actually turn it the other way if you choose to. If you're steady in Warrior One and you don't need the back of your chair, we're going to step the right foot back. Front facing Warrior. All right. So, getting those shoulders around square towards the front of your mat. And once you get there and you bend that front knee, you look at it, make sure it's not going out beyond your toes. This back foot is turned out maybe 20, 30 degrees. Only you know how this feels for your ankle, your knee up into your hip, right? And then see if you can let your arms kind of swing a tiny little bit. Just a little bit. When you start to swing your arms, you realize to not fall over, you're using right here. You're using your belly, your low back, and your hips. Because even just that gentle swinging in the arms kind of makes you almost want to sway a little bit, right? Good. So one more breath here. And then just swing the hands to be right in front of your chest, in front of your heart. And rise your hands up a little bit higher than your head. Clasp your hands. Send your pointer finger up. Now, you're going to have one thumb crossed in front. And everybody always does it the same way that makes it feel natural. Now, see if you from there, go back to your prayer hands and bring the other thumb in front and clasp your fingers and send your pointer fingers up so it feels like you're holding somebody else's hand. Feel the elbows hugging towards each other. Let the elbows lift up a little higher. You can even look up a little if you want. Feel what your belly does there. And you can say right here, if you feel good, then let your arms come longer if you can, but just make sure you're not rising your shoulders up by your ears. Elbows kind of hug in towards your face, letting that warrior one, that lift through the front of the body, the release down the back of the body, help just balance you out. One more breath. And then as you bring your gaze forward and let your hands come gently back to be in front of your chest, coming back to your prayer hands, feel your fingers connected, your thumbs, whatever part of your palms are touching. And we're going to release our hands down. We're going to straighten our front knee out. And we're going to come forward for our pyramid pose. Now, you might want to put your hands up high on the back of the chair. Thighs lifting up, nice long back here. You might feel better to bring both hands down to the seat of the chair or both hands down to blocks, any height. Right? This is up to you how low you go. It's not about how low you go. It's about feeling the thighs engaging up towards the hips and finding the backs of the legs and finding the length in your back. So think about a flat back. So you know if you, if you have a tendency to round up into your back, which is pretty, pretty common, let your heart melt down a little bit. Let yourself think about nice, long, flat backs. Good. And the legs are still engaging. Thighs are still gently lifting up towards the hips. Now, if you want to, you can fold forward over that leg for another breath or two. Good. And then come back up where you're a little more parallel to the floor. We're going to bend the front knee and find lunge here. Letting that right heel now start to reach directly behind your foot. We're going to add a twist. With the left hand coming on up to the low back, rolling that left shoulder up, and letting yourself come into twist here, where you're lengthened out through the top of your head. I know a lot of you really like to lift your arm up. If it feels good, you can add the arm up. You can keep the hand down. Reach back through that inner right heel. And then we'll go ahead and bring our hand back down, come to lunge, and we're going to step forward and get our feet right underneath us into our standing forward bend. Let your knees bend a little bit. Let yourself release. If you can let your head hang, do. Just be mindful. Feel the feet in the floor. And then we'll bring our hands on up to our hips. We're going to rise on up to standing. Let's inhale our arms all the way out and up. 
And on our exhale, let our hands come right down to be in front of our hearts, coming into mountain pose. If you need to sway a little bit, let yourself sway. You know, if it's fun to sway a little side to side, front to back, or maybe even those little circle sways where you go forward to the side, to the back, to the side. So that eventually, you know, you just want to come to center. Your body wants to even and balance out. We're going to unfold our arms right on down the side of here now and shake out a little bit. And we're going to do the other side. So this time it's the left foot that's going to step back for warrior one. Remember whether you step back, you know, 12 inches, 18 inches, 3 feet. Be comfortable in that back foot. Turn your shoulder square to the front of your mat. And then again, when you bend that front knee, make sure it's not going out beyond your toes. Remember, you can be like on your, you're on railroad tracks if you'd rather. And at first, let your hands come to the heart just to get yourself evened out. And now, as you unfold your arms and you start that little kind of back and forth movement of the arms, that little swing, a little swing, you're going to feel how you've got to engage or you're going to fall over. So let yourself focus really forward on a spot in front of you that's easy to focus on. Just gently bring the hands right up to be in front of your chest. Spread your fingers out nice and wide. Start to bring your hands on up a little above your head. Clasp your hands the normal way and send your pointer finger up. I mean your normal way. Your one with the thumb on top that usually is. And then hug your elbows in a little bit. Let yourself lift up a little bit with the elbows if you can. Feel how the belly responds to that big time. And you can stay right there. There's a nice warrior one right there, especially if your shoulders don't want to go any farther, don't. If you can come into straighter arms, you can. Don't force it. Remember, you want your shoulders away from your ears. You want to feel that beautiful uplift through the front of the body, that openness in the front of your left hip. So one more breath. And then as you bring your gaze forward, release your arms on down beside you. We're going to straighten the front knee out. We're still squared off with our shoulders. And we're going to come forward for pyramid. So, again, you may just want to reach to put your hands on the back of the chair. Feel your thighs lifting up towards your hips so that your back is really long. You can go further forward with your torso, right? You can bend your elbows a little bit if you want to do it that way. Keep your hands up higher. Or you can put your hands down lower if you want. So take your time. Feel that if you need to. Once you get your hands down, if you need to adjust your stance a little bit, do it. So maybe you're like, huh, I want to get farther back with that back foot. I want to be longer. Or I need to be shorter to keep my heel down. I need a shorter stance. So just breathe. Try keeping that long back there at first, letting yourself enjoy and if you like to then fold over your leg a little bit, do it. If it feels good, you can kind of bow over. Good. Now come back up enough to where you're lifted up back more parallel to the floor. We're going to find lunge, bending that front knee and letting that left heel reach directly behind our foot now. And then we're going to bring our right hand on up to our right hip and roll that shoulder up, coming into twist, palm down on the sacrum if you can. And of course, if you like to stretch your arms straight up from your shoulder, you can. So be mindful. You know, don't force anything in your shoulder. Let yourself be where you can. And then we'll release to come on back down with our hand. We're going to step forward again, get our feet hip distance apart and parallel. And then go ahead and let your knees bend. Bring your hands on up to your hips. Press into your feet equally. Come on up to standing and inhale your arms all the way out and up. And as you exhale and the hands come down, think about getting higher up with the top of the head up towards the ceiling. So now you feel taller than we when we started class. A lot more space in your spine. And then we'll let our arms come on down, shake out just a little bit, and move around if you need to. Good. So we're going to walk briefly to a wall um, and bring a block with you. 
and you want to have space since there's so few of us. I think Gail's going. So, yeah, you know, Leslie, you have that whole wall. If you don't have room there, Janet, to do a half moon, you can come over here. You can be right there, Helen. There's plenty of room. Yeah. So, actually, some of you might want to bring two blocks. I should have said that before you walked all the way across the room. <laughs> but it's good to walk. So, so we'll, we'll bring our, ourselves right shoulder towards the wall at first. And then put your hands down on your blocks so that you're, and you know, your back is long. You can be in a standing forward bend where your back is lengthened, right? But your, your right foot is maybe three to six inches away from the wall. And the right foot is parallel to the wall. Now you can be on fist if you want. See if you can lift your left leg up like you're doing warrior three for a second. Toes are facing down. And you can use the wall to help you, right? So the outside leg is the one you're picking up. And then, if you want to come into half moon, you can come to your fingertips of that outside left hand. You can even bring the left hand up to your hip and open the toes a little away from the floor, using the wall to support you. Left hand up to the hip, or even stretching the left arm up, letting the palm face outward as you let yourself come into your half moon. Remember, only if your hip allows you to do this. Stay parallel with that leg if you need to. One more breath. And then go ahead and release your hand back down, your leg back down. We're going to come on up and sit back at the wall for a second. You can have your blocks in your hands. Just let your hips release. Just sit back, bend your knees a little bit, let it feel good. Good. And we are going to walk around to the other side. So, left shoulder to the wall. Let yourself feel the wall there as close as you need. You can, you can have the left foot a little further away if it's better. And you're going to lift that outside leg up. So it could be warrior three right there, and that might be where you want to stay. You can feel your arm or your shoulder into the wall and let it support you a little bit. If you want to open the hip, bring the right hand up to the right hip and let your right toes come a little away from the floor. You can come into that half moon and you can rise your top arm up if you want. So this is pretty deep hip opening pose. Just be mindful, but also think about the length of your spine here. And the wall really keeps you honest in your alignment there. One more breath. And then we'll come on back down. We're going to release again to come on back up to turn your back to the wall. Good job, Gail. And take your time, release. If you want to squat, go ahead. If you want to go all the way down, squat, do it. If you want to step your feet out further and put your elbows above your knees, maybe that'll be even better too. So let it feel really good to release your hips, your back. Good. And we're going to make our way back as we come up onto our mats. And just move your chair on off to the side. We're going to come on down onto our bellies on the floor once we get back to our mats. So take your time. Let yourself come on down. You can make a little pillow with your hands, rest your forehead. And then bend your knees and circle your feet around a little bit. And you can even let your lower legs do windshield wiper blades going side to side if that feels good. Good. And then come on back to long legs and let's come on to our forearms. Elbows underneath the shoulders. And for a second, let your palms face each other. So your pinky fingers are on the ground, your palms are turned to face each other. Just let yourself enjoy right there. Engage the belly. You know if you need to be lower, all you have to do is slide your elbows down more towards your waist if that feels better in your back. Coming into Sphinx Pose here, we're going to go ahead and rotate the palms down towards the ground. Spread your fingers out really wide. 
Just imagine you're trying to reach an octave on a piano. So you're really reaching out through the thumbs, the pinkies, and feel the other fingers on the floor as well. It makes me think of Margaret. And then come on down. We're going to roll onto our left side. Reach your left arm overhead and if you can. Now, if this bothers your shoulder, don't do it. You can keep your arm down and grab like a block and put it under your head or a blanket. So if your shoulder doesn't want your arm to go up like that, don't do it. Get comfortable however you need to. You can always bend the elbow if that's better, whatever works. And now just stretch long like you're standing in mountain pose here on your side. Lift your top foot a little bit off your bottom foot. So that right foot is a little bit off the bottom one. And then pretend you're gonna do tree pose. Bring that right foot in maybe to the inside of your calf maybe up higher towards the inside of your inner thigh and then take your time you can play here just letting the hip release it's a nice hip release you don't have to do anything else you can keep your right hand on the floor if you like you can stretch both arms overhead you can even you know do that hand clasp where you send the pointer finger up like we did in warrior one if that feels good but think of this as really a release for your hip, right? Pressing in gently to the outside edge of that left foot. Good, one more breath. We're gonna bring that right leg on back down long. We're gonna roll back onto our bellies. And this time, coming into a forearm plank or a half forearm plank. You can bend your knees as you come onto your forearms, clasp your hands, pull yourself forward towards the front of your mat, or you can put your toes down and do a full forearm plank if you choose. That's totally up to you. Just be mindful, let it feel good. Feel the belly, the low back, the hips. Take your time to enjoy finding that core body there. And then we're gonna come on back down. We're gonna roll to the other side. So this time you're on your right side. Again, you wanna be really easy and comfortable for that right shoulder. So if you need to fold your arm a little bit, if you need to bring it forward, just really take your time and come into that sense of being in your mountain pose, lying on your side, right? That left foot is a little off the right, so your feet are about hips distance apart. Press into the outer edge of the right pinky toe on the floor. And that might enable you to bring your left hand off the floor. You don't have to, but you can. And of course, as you think about coming in like you're doing tree, left foot can just come right there to the inside of your calf. It can come up higher above your knee if you want. And again, if you like reaching your arms overhead, you can. So the pressure of the outside of that right foot into the floor really engages the core body. So it's real easy to fall out of this backwards, right? But good. One more breath. And then we're going to come back down to that long leg. We're going to roll back to our bellies again. And let's find again that half or full forearm plank. So coming in to really letting yourself engage the belly, the low back and the hips. Good, one more breath. And then we're gonna release on down and we're gonna make our way towards pose of the child. Shifting our hips back, big toes together. You can separate your knees as much as you want. And you can also stay up in the air with your hips if you need. You know, you can always rest your head down on your hands or you can shift back as long as your hips and knees are okay with that. So be really mindful of how your back and your hips feel. And don't force anything in a child's pose because you want it to be a really relaxing resting pose. Nothing that you're struggling to be in, but something that you can let yourself just watch your breath and direct your breath. So perhaps 
directing your breath to where you need it, whether it's your back or your hip or any, any place that feels like tension in it that you can just imagine you're breathing into that place. More nice, full, deep breath. And then as you let your hands come back by your knees, rise yourself on up. We're going to come around to sitting. So you know you're welcome to grab a blanket to sit on if that feels better for you. Stretch your legs out for a second there. And then go ahead and bring your hands behind you. And, and you can be up on fingertips if that feels better to you. Or you can let yourself go down more, even flat to your palms if you want. But think about drawing your chest forward and your shoulders back. And, and don't force anything about where you look. So you may want to look a little more forward. You may want to look a little up. But just coming into that lift, it's like your sternum is being, with a string attached to it, that string is being pulled on a diagonal line. So up to maybe where the wall meets the ceiling, and you can just open there across your chest. And then we're going to rise back up, and let's cross our left ankle above our right knee into like a figure four here. All right, so I'm going to mirror you guys, actually. That makes it easier. So let yourself just find that figure four. You can go ahead and lower your foot down. If that's too much for you to sit up here with that figure four above the knee, just let the foot come lower. And also, if it's too much to cross, don't even do that. You can keep the foot to the inside. From here, we'll take a nice inhale. And on the exhale, we're gonna twist, bringing our right hand around to that left knee and coming on around with your left fingertips lightly touching the floor. And just keep flexing through that left foot. Let yourself enjoy chin about parallel to the floor. One more inhale. And on the exhale, we're going to come on back around through center and go all the way into the other direction. So just unwind there. Finding that twist. Feel your sits bones in the ground. Draw your pelvic floor up a little bit. Good, one more inhale. And let your exhale bring you on back around. We're gonna switch legs. So coming into that other side, and again, this is a new leg, so new, maybe you may not wanna come up higher, maybe you need to be lower, maybe you need to be inside. That, that foot to the inside instead of over the top. And then take your time. Take your nice inhale here to find that length in your spine. And as you exhale, twisting to your right, bringing your left hand maybe to that knee, maybe to your shin, don't force it. Back fingertips just lightly touching the ground so you feel so much space in your spine in this twist. Good. Chin is about parallel to the floor. Again, if you can feel the sitting bones into the ground, the sense of lifting up your pelvic floor a little bit. One more inhale here. And as you exhale, come back through center. We're going to keep on going, remember, all the way into the other direction. So again, find those back. Also feel your left heel on the ground. Just draw it back towards you a little bit. One more breath here. And then as you exhale, slowly unwind yourself on back into center and stretch your legs out for a second. Move through your feet and your ankles however you need to. Wiper blades if you want. Little leg bounces if you want. We're going to come down onto our backs on the floor. So take your time. Come on down. However it feels good for you to get down to the floor. 
And then once you get down there, let the right knee come on into your chest. Extend your left leg long on the floor. Flex through both your feet. Press that right leg gently into your hands. So the back is naturally coming into its natural curves. And then see if you can just let your head roll a little bit from side to side. Almost like, and it's just rolling. It's not like you're turning your head. It's almost like you're massaging the back of your head. And then finish off to have yourself look up at the ceiling again. And we're gonna bring the left leg in and switch to extend that right leg long. You can hold behind your thigh or you can hold below your knee on your shin there. Flex through both your feet and feel that left leg just gently pressing into your hands. And then again, if it feels good to let the head do that little rolling motion, obviously if that doesn't feel good to you, don't do it. Just easily feeling that release. And then when you're ready to stop back at center, let yourself look up at the ceiling, bring both knees in towards the chest, separate your knees and bring your hands either to your shins or your ankles, or of course, if your hips allow you to wrap your hands around the, the outside edges of your feet in Baddha Konasana, you can. But otherwise, don't do it. Just think about letting the hips and the low back release, wherever feels good for you. And then go ahead and bring your knees on back in towards your chest and let your feet come to the floor. Separate them a little wider towards the outer edges of your mat and let your arms come out beside you. And see if you can just easily allow your knees to go from one side to the other. So this is all up to you. How far you go, whether you move with every breath, exhaling as you come to the side, inhaling when you come back up to the top of the knees, or maybe you like to stay on one side and just hang out, right? Just be mindful, let it feel really good. Maybe your body after a couple of those wants to do something else, right? If you're just immediately inclined to do anything at all right now, other than these little twists, let yourself do it. It doesn't have to be a yoga pose. It can be. You, know? you may decide that you want to let yourself come into a bridge pose or a supported bridge pose. You may decide you want to let yourself come into another little twist of a sort that's good for you. But really take your time. Being able to let yourself respond to your body's needs instead of you trying to tell your body what to do, right? I'm going to start to get the light, and then once I get all that done, I would love to start to bring stuff around to you. To me, is cold. We do have all these blankets. Now, some of you, it feels like a relief to be on the cold floor, and some people just feel like it makes you get chilled when you lie there after after class like this. So let me know if I can bring you a bolster if you need. You put under your knees, or you can always lie back on a bolster. Remember, I've got these little bolsters. You need cover, maybe even just for your feet, or if you need a little bit of a blanket for the back of your head. Just take your time. Wiggle your way however you need into Shavasana. And remember, 
just want to let yourself get however is comfortable for you so that you can let yourself come to watch your breath and you don't feel distracted by any kind of discomfort in your body. Support if you need. Maybe even just slightly changing where you have your leg or your arm. Sometimes that makes a huge difference. let yourself be with your own breath, watching the waves of your breath coming in and going out. And when your mind wanders away from the breath, no judgment, just softly bringing yourself back again. Whatever helps you do that, if counting your breath helps you, if a mantra or a word helps you to come back to your breath, you can just give yourself the gift of these few minutes, allowing your body and your brain to find those little quiet places where you can benefit from all you just did. Just by letting yourself completely and fully relax.
continue supporting you again. And your breaths will naturally, when they start to come back, the feeling kids will want to deepen and lengthen. Just let your breath start to come in and go out a little more fully. And take your time as the breath starts to refresh you when you're ready to move. If you can start with your fingers and your toes, your extremities, your hands and your feet. And move up into letting your arms and your legs move the way that feels comfortable for you. So you can stretch, you can bend, you can roll to either your right or your left side. If you're comfortable to come into that soft fetal position on your side, you can use maybe your arm as a pillow if you don't have a blanket there. And just give yourself a little bit longer to be cradled by the ground. 